Welcome, my name is Ben Falla and this is A Pact Publishing. So before you even start, let's just define who you are, the one that is taking this title. You're a JavaScript developer, if an ES5 one or an ES6 one, you don't have to be an ES6 one because every time when we talk about new ES6 things, we'll also explain them, even though it's not going to be our main topic of this title. And you're a motivated problem solver. For one, before starting this title, you have to install a few things, and there's a lot of documentation online for it, so you just have to install a few things. That's the big problem that you would need to solve. But generally speaking, you want to solve things. You're motivated. Okay, so let's talk about what are the big stuff that we're going to be covering. What are the main topics that we'll be covering our learning goals for this title? We'll learn how to build user interfaces in React. And as we do that, we're also going to integrate Bootstrap 4.0 into React and show you really that process of how do you integrate third-party tools into React. Moreover than that, we're also going to explore SaaS and learn how the syntax works, how to integrate it in the world of NPM, and for that matter, into the world of React, until we create incredibly powerful modular components with dynamic CSS, or more accurately, dynamic CSS that is created by SAS. And last but not least, our last big topic is going to be learning how to animate within React. So by the end of these skills that you're going to develop in this title, you're really going to have all the core skills you need to create any user interface. With that said, what are the secondary learning goals and what other topics we'll be exploring? We'll be exploring the learning of React itself. Although that's not our main focus, it's going to be weaved throughout the title, learning about how React works and learning the different core competencies that you want to know about React, namely props, state, and user interactions. We'll learn a little bit of ES6 and JSX functionally based on what we need as we're building things out. And we're also going to explore Webpack, Webpack Dev Server, and Hot Reloading to understand how to get our site to run in the best packager possible to save us time as we're developing and building out our application. With that said, let's take a short overview of the different chapters and se well sections that exist within this title. There are five sections when in the first section we'll focus on bootstrapping React. And in other words, we're really going to set everything up. We're going to learn about the project itself that we'll be using with bootstrap. And we'll also create our first React component using JSX. Our second section is going to be focused on React components as we focus on building out ES6 classes that are React components. So in the process, we'll learn quite a lot of ES6 in chapter two. Our third section is gonna be all about creating one component from start to finish and making it really brilliant and dynamic as we merge between Bootstrap, ES6, and React components to create a really perfect Jumbotron React component that could be used for production already. Chapter four or section four is going to be all about SAS as we integrate SAS into our bootstrap and React components. Really powerful stuff, making our CSS dynamic as well. Last but not least, in our final section, we'll focus on animation and make our components just look better as they animate. In our first section, as we we're saying, we're going to bootstrap React and in the process, we'll familiarize ourselves with Webpack and the Webpack dev server as we create a hot reloading application that every time we make any change in our code will automatically update in our browser as well to save us time. We're also going to add loader support for ES6 and JSX in our Webpack and understand how that works. And last but not least, we're also going to build out our first JSX React component. Well, in this lecture, our focus is going to be setting up our foundation project. So with that said, before you really start watching this lecture, make sure you install Node.js because once we're done with this intro, we're assuming that you've installed Node.js and NPM and they're, well, not kind of, really working. And we're going to start in this lecture a new project with NPM. We're going to see how to create a new project and what that actually means as we build out our core HTML structure that we're going to be using throughout the remainder of this title. So let's jump right into our first lecture as we set things up. Welcome. And we're starting off with a completely empty folder and I'm assuming you know the basics of working with Terminal. Beyond that also to be able to take this title, you have to make sure that you've installed Node.js and NPM. When you go on to the Node.js website, when you install Node.js, it will automatically install for you NPM as well. 
But if you already had an earlier version, make sure to check that you have a version that is 6 or above, and if not, go and update your version of Node. Same applies for NPM. Make sure that you have a version that is 3 or above, and if you do, you're good. If not, go on to the NPM site to learn how to update your NPM. With that said, I'm going to assume that you have a running node and a running NPM and everything is working. And from there on, let's start building our project. So as I said, I'm starting off from a completely empty folder. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a few directories, really starting off with one directory. And I'm going to create the directory, which will be called public, and it will have inside of it an image folder. So create it. The next step that I'm going to do is I want to start up and create an NPM skeleton website. Well, project more accurately or module more accurately. To do that, I'm going to type NPM in it and type enter. Once I've done that, it's going to walk me through an interview, which I could then fill up. For example, for this project, I'm going to call this. Yeah, that sounds good to me bootstrapping react that's beautiful we're in version one i'm not going to put a description our entry point is fine i'm going to leave the defaults really as they are and just scan through them and keep them as they are everything looks good to me and i'm going to click on yes once i've done this and i went through the interview you'll see that if you look into the directory you'll see that we'll have here our package.json and we're going to have our public folder now, package.json is really the descriptor of our everything that we're doing. And what it literally does, it basically creates for us a skeleton for our application that then tells whoever else will be using it in the future what are the things that we expect for it to have and what is this package, making it easier for us to package it up and move it around that way. So one of the things that we're going to do in this process is set up a virtual host or really a, a client side host. So we'll be able to run our files. But before we do that, now that we set up our initial package, I just want to go ahead and create our basic HTML. Now to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to touch the file inside of our public folder, creating an index.html file. Once that file is created, I'm going to go into my editor and in my editor, I'm just going to go right into that new image file that has been created. And let's go ahead and start creating that document. So first of all, I'm going to start off with the, our HTML by creating a new doc type and defining it as an HTML5 doc type by just typing HTML. So basically what I'm telling the browser is this website is HTML5 compliant. The next step is I'm going to create my HTML and give it a language. So it's going to be in English. So whoever is going to read this will know that this is an English speaking website. And I'll create my head, which I'm sure you're familiar with that, and create my body, which I'm sure you're familiar with that as well. Let's go ahead and also set up in our header our metadata. So let me just set here our meta char set and set it to be UTF-8. And let's make sure that our website also supports the latest, well, more accurately, what do I want to do is I'm going to call it HTTP dash equiv, and I'm going to set it to be equal to X U A compatible. Now what that is basically is a directive that is applied for Internet Explorer, and we're going to tell Internet Explorer to what version of Internet Explorer was the site built for. And in our case, we're going to set our content to tell Internet Explorer, or more accurately, to tell Edge, that new version, that our website is that Edge. It's customized for Edge, so it doesn't have to create. In Internet Explorer, whenever a website comes up, it, Internet Explorer decides if it was built for older versions of IE or for newer ones, and then it dynamically decides that. In our case, we're avoiding that situation by basically telling the browser, use the edge, use the modern version. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put your auto because our, we're living in that modern world. I want to tell mobile devices that our, and let me, let me just also set here name, and I'm just going to copy paste this a few times because we're going to have a few of these that we're going to be putting in and also content. And we have a few of those coming in as well. So let me just copy paste that three times. 
because we're going to be putting three different ones. And in this case, the first one that I want to set is the viewport. And the viewport property basically tells the browser that the content inside here, mainly really relatable to mobile devices, is how should it treat the content. Because earlier mobile devices and still mobile devices, what they tend to do is they take all the content and pretend it's on a size of 1280 because that's the size or 1080. That's a size where a lot of content is visible and then it shrinks it down to fit into the browser. But because we're aware of that, and we're building our site to be mobile compatible, then we're gonna go ahead and say to the device, use the device width as that width. Don't use a random width that you decide and set that initial scale equals one. Again, so what I'm basically telling that browsers are mobile mainly, make sure to use the your starting width don't re, really don't scale things up set it in its normal scale and set the viewport width content to be the width of the device itself making sure that the browser itself is not going to manipulate our content but will be in charge of that manipulation now let's just add your oats on author not that it's mandatory and my name is ben fallis so i'm that author and let's also put here a description which in a real world scenario, I would go ahead and put here some sort of a description. Last but not least, let's give ourselves a title for our header. And I'm just gonna put here our tentative title name for this title and just put it right inside our HTML. Beautiful. So we set up our basic core structure of our HTML. Let's go ahead and create our body as well. And to do that, I'm just going to go into my body and I'm going to create here a div. Now I'm going to be using bootstrap really to design it. So I'm not going to worry at all about design, but I know it's going to be a leader. Uh, really what I want is something that's going to take over our full screen. And I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to create an H1 and I'm going to create a paragraph. Let's just create that. And we're gonna create two of those. So let's go ahead and place that in there. And I'm gonna put for our headline, let's call this building React user interfaces with bootstrap and SAS. Hmm, that's what we're gonna be covering in this title. And let's just go ahead and put your auto a link. So let's go ahead and just put here a link, which will turn into a button once we're starting to use React. And I'm just gonna type here, discover things. Last but not least, let's put it a, a, a link. So let's have people go to my website. All making sure that it opens to them in a blank window. Beautiful. So that's it. We have here a basic structure of our HTML. And if we just go to a browser and load it up, we should have basically our basic structure building React user interfaces. Very, very plain. But really, our goal is for it to take the full screen and for it to be visual, which we'll use Bootstrap for that. But before we really even could use Bootstrap, what we really want to do is we want to not approach our file as a file as we're doing right now by literally just taking a file and viewing it directly really when you're working in development you want to work with servers and that's exactly what we're going to use npm for right now because in the next lecture we're going to use npm with the help of webpack to create a dev server that is a node dev server that will run in the background so we will have a real environment so we could test our application out in a real environment type setup